Hello, it is I, your KSP boyo. Uh, we're launching the docking module, and I'm sorry if the audio sounds a little bit weird today. I moved my setup from right next to where my bed is to my closet, because my closet has lots of room, and yeah, that's basically what we're doing here. Hold up, future Ashton here reminding you to subscribe. If we get to 500 uh, subscribers before Christmas, I'll do an hour-long Kerbal Space Program video. Uh, yeah, so keep, yeah, do that. Subscribe, please help. Anyway, it's going to be a long video. I'm actually recording this at 2.30 in the morning. Why? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but it, I just want it out Sunday. Uh, that's, that's really all I want from this episode. Uh, anyway, we're launching this thing that's a docking module. It's to continue our trek from the last episode. I know it's been a minute since the last episode, but I'm changing up the upload schedule just a little bit. Um, like, we'll get the KSP, whatever it's, the KSP RSS uh, one small step. Uh, that'll be up on Wednesdays uh, every other week now. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm... So we're launching this. This is so that the that things can dock to the station. In the last episode, we launched a device that kind of carries two SSTOs to the station and docks it to the station. But we haven't been able to dock it to the station yet because we don't have a docking adapter that actually fits the station. This fixes that problem. So this. Uh, has one end that is the senior port and one end that is the normal sized port so that it can uh, facilitate a normal sized docking port at this station. Uh, I don't know why I never put a normal sized one on there but I think this will help for things in the long run because I kind of want to make this like our mo main primary station and I'm planning on building new SSTOs that can get all the way to this station, no problem. Those, those old SSTOs, they're they're kind of junk to be completely honest. Like, yeah. Anyway, I'm deorbiting the uh, transfer stage. The entire first stage was expendable. Did not need, did not need to be. But I messed up. Whoops. Anyway, we're deorbiting this portion of, well, we're deorbiting the second stage, and it actually ended up getting quite a bit more deorbited than I thought it would be. Um, yeah, I I didn't know it would drag as much as it did, but it did drag quite a bit. And I tried to like raise the periapsis, but we're just going in way too fast. I wanted to land it on land or at least try to, but it's so aerodynamically unstable. It just it just wouldn't work. You can really only slow it down. As soon as you start building speed, it'll just the uh, building speed in the forward direction. It'll flip. Anyway, now we're back at the ch uh, the charmer with the crate and the cobra attached. Both of those are X3 series uh, things, just so that the weights are pretty equivalent. And we're currently orbiting in low curvature orbit. We need to get to like a medium curvature orbit in order to actually dock with the station not to mention all of the stuff so there's one of those large chernikov i think that's what it's called chernikov uh nuclear engines at the back there and that is what uh very efficiently brings us up to the station this i think i'll actually repurpose later on as a interplanetary like tug because it, it has enough delta V to just do that. If I just dock like a large tanker to it and just fill up this thing with a whole bunch of liquid fuel, then just send it off to another planet, I think it'll be like a good, you know, tug. I mean, actually, it could bring these uh, two SSTOs all the way to lathe. And maybe that is what I do. But it wouldn't have any experiments on board. That's not what I'll do. I'm not going to do that to Lave. But maybe we'll do something that involves Lave later this episode. Maybe. Maybe not. You know, you never know. You never know what we do that involves Lave. Anyway, here we are. We're coming in and we're 
getting in close to a docking. Uh, well, we're about a thousand meters away. Now we're about 500 or 700 after we, you know, did the time warp. I had to do some lazy docking methods because the the space station is currently smaller than the transfer vessel to the space station, which is a problem. Uh, not too much of a problem here because this is KSP. This isn't like real life where if you docked like a uh, starship to the ISS, it would just break the ISS apart. No, this is KSP. This doesn't matter. Like, I have auto strut on everything. Like, we we should be just we should be just dealt with. Um, yeah, this one it's actually one of the reasons why I really don't want to do this again is I I don't like launching these SSTOs. They're very they're very annoying to launch and I I don't want to launch them again but I mean I, I know I'll need to I need to get Jeb and Valentina and all of them off you know off the surface but I don't know how I feel about some of the uh, the things here anyway we just immediately just dock like it, that was one of the smoothest dockings I've ever done it was perfect just absolutely perfect kind of yeah but it, but it, it was good enough it was good enough much better than early on uh i don't think people <laughs> remember this i mean if you've watched since the first episode um i mean it's kind of yeah it, there have been some rough dockings in the past uh anyway this is the uh atlantis rocket it is a inner interplanetary style vessel um much more capable than the old jarby star vessel um but it is n it does not look as aesthetically pleasing these are just meant to go a long distance do a lot of science and yeah basically just reach jewel that is that is the main thing for this for this whole you know shebang it is meant to reach jewel and uh bring along a sizable cargo all the way there it's also using one of those giant chernikov nuclear engines uh if you can't see there is a science module attached to it one of the the stocked ones i had to actually dodge one of the ringlets that i that i jettisoned uh, by unextending like a solar panel and then like moving out of the way yeah that was kind of hairy i was very worried that i'd end up hitting something yep there's the sun shining bright on this mission as Durfred kerman uh Pulls this into a circularization burn high, high up above Kerbin. Um, I don't know if this is the best choice, but we're doing it. It's going to be up here. Uh, this should have enough Delta V to, you know, get our Kerbals to uh, Jewel, circularize around Jewel, land on, I believe, Tylo. I mean, this isn't landing on Tylo. The lander that we're about to send up in a couple minutes is what's going to be landing on, like, Tylo and Lathe and stuff like that. And I actually have it specifically designed for Lathe. I don't want to land on Tylo. Tylo is going to be a pain to land on. I'm using it for a, you know, capture, like a gravitational capture style deal. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I, I don't want to use that for... Uh, landing on Tylo this this lo this lander right here which is called um, I missed the name but it's it's called something oh, oh man anyway it's a lander it lands it's named something that has to do with mythology I believe 
Maybe it's named Atlanta or Odysseus or um I hope past me hovers over it for at least a second so I can tell what I'm looking at and maybe I can see in the timeline but I just wanted to do this whole thing in one you know just one shot so we're not even going to care about it anyway we have Lambert and Teamy Kerman and they're going on a excellent adventure all the way to uh, wherever the hell we're going. This actually has multiple types of engines specifically designed to land on different bodies. This one I have decided to ignite the, uh, you know, the nuclear engine specifically for navigating around in space. But as soon as we start getting into areas where the gravity is much harsher, uh, like on Lave or just anywhere else, or even weaker, I can use the weaker and the stronger engines depending on what I want to do. I have them all put on uh, keybinds, so like they'll shut down all the other engines while all the other engines will turn on. It's very handy. It'll be very useful in the long run. Alright, so... Is this, is it not called the Atlantis? Like, I don't know what the name of this craft is called, and I am so sad that I don't know it, but like, you guys already saw it, so I don't understand why I'm dwelling on it. You guys saw the name of the craft. Anyway, we completely overshot our target. Oh, it's called Alpha. That's what it's called. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my God. That was a failure on my part. Anyway. Here we are, coming in really quickly. I was actually worried about this. Um, yeah, and there were no pilots on board, which is kind of hairy. But, I mean, whatever. I, in order for the docking, because I needed a pilot, I actually swapped uh, the pilot who is in here for uh, Lambert. So, Defred and Lambert swapped places. Defred's only a one star, so like, he's not going to get a whole lot done, uh, but it's enough. It's enough for SAS. So, hopefully Defred gets a lot of experience on his, I believe, like 10 year journey that he's about to embark on. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be fun for him. Also, this is the first episode in a while, I think since episode 31 that have actually used the, um, that have used my YouTube kind of book thing that I have used to ha used to really keep up with. I also just kind of, like, I also just kind of use it for, like, lists and stuff like this. So, like, the first time I ever did it is, um, the first time I ever, time I ever used this book for anything, I, uh, I used it to talk to a college for a, um, a, uh, like a, what's it called? An official visit. Anyway, we're, I'm planning the, the burn to go to Jewel. And you can see that I make the, the Tylo encounter. I am so sorry if that made a whole bunch of noise. I just knocked my pop filter. Yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I have... I basically was like, oh yeah, I have a call with this college at 12.30. I never ended up going to that college. There's another college also listed saying that I had a call for that college as well. It doesn't say when. I don't know why it doesn't say when. But it, it's, it's also another college I ended up not going to. Because I go to UCF now. But that's also not the college I originally went to. Doesn't matter. All right, well, we are surely popping off the, uh, the just zooming out into the distance. This has been a long episode. We're about 14 minutes in, and I have actually continuously been talking this entire time. I am actually very much impressed with myself. Alpha and Atlantis are just rocketing off into the distance all the way to Jewel. This is actually quite great. This is this has been quite a successful episode, and uh, yeah, 
I uh, I have one more thing to launch. It's Oranos three. I don't know if there's been another if there's been another Oranos three, but I know that there's been a two, and I know that there's been a one. So here we are. It's going to Urlum, which is the Uranus counterpart. It's yeah. It's it's very useful. It's a very heavy piece of equipment. It is a massive satellite that it will be going into orbit of Urlum. It's a probe, technically it's a probe, but it's it's going to be a very very strong probe science-wise. It'll produce us a lot of science and will end up helping us tremendously from basically now on in this save game. Uh, it'll unlock a whole bunch of science for us. We need a whole bunch of science unlocked so that we can eventually get Kerbals to the outer planets before KSP 2 releases officially on February 24th, I believe it was. Yeah, February 24th, I think, is the date. And I am so hyped. So hyped for that. And that means that this this series will be coming to a close the week of February 24th. So whatever week that's coming up on that week, this that'll be the end of this series. The, the, the end of a series that has gone on for well over a year now. And has been the longest running series on my channel... You know what the longest running series was before this? It was, I believe, uh, City Skylines video. Like, I had like five of them for one city, and I hated making those City Skylines videos. Um, I just was getting a lot of views for them at the time, but I love making Kerbal Space Program videos. It's quite great. Um, and I can't wait for Kerbal Space Program 2. I'm excited for the new UI. I'm excited for the new planets. I'm excited for the new graphics. I am just so hyped. Just so hyped for that game. And uh, yeah, if you made it to the end of this episode or around the end of this episode, I know there's a whole minute left, but if you made it to this point in the episode, thank you for actually tuning in. And I, I really hope you subscribe because, like, I mean, if you made it this far and you're not subscribed already, I mean... What are you doing here, bro? Like, you're clearly enjoying this. Like, come on, hit that button. Hit that button. Get me to 400. Before, uh, before, uh, 1025, that's, that's when Social Blade says I'm reaching 400, but I, I don't, I don't believe that. It, it, I mean, this is coming out on 1023, so like, what? Anyway, yeah, if you're, if, come on, just, just do it. I mean, it, it means a lot to me, and, I mean, I would love to get to a point where, you know, this is actually kind of successful. So, yeah. Bye.